Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This video is going to summarise factors which affect the shape of our coastlines. And as always, check out the description box below for the free worksheet that you can access to create your lovely revision notes for this particular topic or to support you while you're learning from home. Now, there are multiple factors that affect the shape of our coastline, and I'm not going to talk about every single one today, but I am going to give you an overview of eight factors in total. So we're going to start off thinking about geology. And when we're thinking about geology, we're thinking about the rock type that is present on our coastlines. Coastlines can be made up of many different rock types, from more resistant rock, to less resistant rock. So what I mean by that is some rocks are harder and more resistant to erosion, whereas others are soft rock and less resistant to erosion and therefore erode more easily. So when we have a coastline made of resistant rock, it is potentially going to create lovely uh, landscapes like headlands, like you can see on the right hand image, or you might get a nice cave or an arch like you can see in the left hand image. And depending on the geology of the coastline, our coastline will change its shape depending on how easily that rock type can be worn away, weathered away and broken down and it will give us different landforms as a result. We then have got human activity, so how we as humans use the coastline. So when the weather is lovely and gorgeous, lots of people, particularly in the UK, they are attracted to the coastal environments and they like to have picnics, to, to walk on sand dunes and on the beaches. Now that's great, but if we have an increased number of visitors that visit our coastlines, walking along our coastlines, driving and parking on our coastlines, we can get increased amounts of what we call footpath erosion, where the ground, and in this case the sand, is constantly being worn away by people constantly walking over the sand. Not to mention, if we park on the sand, it can also compact the sand and deprive it of oxygen in its lower layers. So human activity, even though we all loved going to the beach and going to our coastlines, is not necessarily always the best when it comes to our coastal environments. We've then got climate and seasonal variations. So we can have lovely summer, coastline environments that attract people to visit our coastlines and we also have winter which can bring us destructive waves and heavy storm-like conditions which brings us on to the point of extreme weather so extreme weather events like storm surges and upswells of really high destructive waves can again increase the amount of erosion put pressure on our coastline in terms of the amount of material that is being worn away and it can dramatically change a coastal environment in a very short space of time when extreme weather events take place. Transportation affects the shape of our coastline because sediment moves throughout our coastline in what we call its sediment cell, the area that the sediment such as sand and pebbles and silt travel around. So some coastlines will have transportation taking place where one area of the beach might be starved of sediment and therefore we get less sediment in that particular area of the beach, whereas other areas of the coastline will have more transportation taking place and potentially we'll see larger beaches begin to develop. On the other hand, coastlines that are experiencing erosion will decrease in size and what we call retreats move back into the land and again that can affect the shape of the coastline depending on the rate of erosion so whether the erosion is taking place at a high or slow rate. Deposition, the dropping off of sediment also affects the shape of the coastline because where we have our bays or our sheltered areas like you can see on this picture here we have sediment, sand, shingle being deposited, dropped off in these little bay areas because the waves have lost their energy. This will allow beaches and the coastline to build up and increase in its sediment size, whereas 
other coastal environments and other locations that don't experience high rates of deposition because the waves do not lose energy, as the coastline is not in a sheltered environment, will not potentially see this buildup of sediment and instead might see a decrease in sediment because of erosion. And finally, we've got the types of waves. So on the left, we've got constructive waves that will build up our beaches because we, it has a strong swash but a weak backwash and therefore deposits sediment onto our coastline. Whereas on the right hand image, we have a destructive wave and destructive waves are known for eroding our coastline because they have a very weak swash, but a really strong backwash, which will drag a lot of sediment back out into the sea. So that's a quick summary of some of the factors that affect the shape of the coastline. Thank you so much for watching everyone. As always, I'm hoping you're finding these videos useful. Like and subscribe if you are, and I'll see you next time.